going on guys? Don Russo, Freeway Music. Hope you're doing well. Um, there are a lot of really great riffs and riffs that are easily recognizable in the world. And there is a reason that they're awesome. Um, and so I want to talk about that. I know that I've been doing a lot of stuff on technique and chords and basics. And so I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Today we're going to delve into one of the most iconic riffs of all time. Uh, we're going to talk about Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. I'm um, in standard tuning. It's normally played a half step down. Just want to let you know. So if you want to play it true to the recording, you'll need to tune your guitar down a half step on every string. So E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat, all the way across. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the main riff and we're going to look at the first couple of solos and then not going to get into the crazy solo in the end today. I don't have time for that. But we're going to look at why is so awesome. So here we go. Um, right off the bat, we're going to start off with this riff here. The... Alright, for those of you who don't know how to play the riff, let me just slow it down and just show you the riff real, real fast. Okay, so I'm going to be on the 12th fret of the D string, and I'm going to be playing an octave. It's a D on the 15th fret of the B string, okay? Uh, and then I will go to the A on the 14th fret of the G string, to the G on the 12th fret, so then we have the G on the high E string, back to the A on the 14th fret here, then F sharp on the 14th fret of that high E, and back to the 14th fret of the G string. So there's a million tabs out there for this uh, riff that are mostly accurate because it's such a famous song. Um, so basically, you do that same thing twice in a row. So right off the bat, we're playing the first chord that is, that that is over is a D chord. And you'll notice that this is a D. If you do a D chord shape up here. Literally, the riff just basically is bouncing around this D chord. So, um, and I like how it creates a little tension because what it does here in the middle, it goes, it goes from the G to the G here, which is going to create a little bit of tension because that's the fourth of D. So it's like a D suspended fourth chord, and then it's then it resolves on a D major chord. So. So it gives you a little tension in the middle, right here, and then it resolves it right nicely on the D right there, okay? Now it does that twice for the D chord. And then when it switches to the C chord, C add 9, C however you want to do it, it's fine. It basically does the same exact riff except it changes only the first note. So the first note, instead of being D, will go to an E, like this. And that's important because E is the third of C, or C add 9. So instead of this, you got And then when we go to the next chord, G, right here, it's going to be G as the first note. So it's going to pick a note in the, in the G chord. And then when it goes back to D, it starts with D again. Great, so here's the formula for writing a riff like Sweet Child of Mine's riff. You basically make a repetitive riff that sounds pretty good, relatively good over all the chords, and then you change the bottom note. Let's see if we can do one. I'll make one up on the fly. So I'm going to go A, then I'm going to go E, then I'm going to go D. Just like that, A, E, D. So let's say I'm just doing something like this, A, Okay, so let's say I'm just doing a riff like uh, hmm, for A, let's say. And when 
I go to the E, I could do the same thing or I could change it to like a note. D. Or I could do like a, this is an A, which is in the D chord, or I could do a D note. Or I could do an F sharp note right here. Because that F sharp is, in, is a third of D. So basically, you just you can create a repetitive pattern up top. Uh, this is a little bit more, a little bit more notes, and then you take that that riff and you just change the bot the bottom note to a note that matches the chord that you're on. Okay, so that's um that's how you that's how you would create a riff similar. So this riff is so awesome because it moves uh, with the chords, and it basically is just like a riff with chord chasing. All right, now let's talk about the solo. This part here where it goes. So that part's pretty dope. That's like the, that's like um, the solo. It's just so tasty. One of the best things about it is that it's not. He's not playing too much. He's playing just enough, right? He leaves like nice spaces in there. Now let's talk about. So he's, he's leaving some space in there, which is nice, but there's a common thread through the whole thing, kind of like the main riff. There's this, that's the main thread. So this solo has like a, it's kind of like a good story, has like a, like a plot line that runs through it, a, th a common thread that kind of runs through it. A great paper will have a main theme that kind of runs through the whole paper, right? So when you're writing a solo, it's nice to have that kind of thread that you can kind of bounce around. Now let's talk about how it follows the chords. So the first chord is D. It's gonna go, it's right there. It's landing on the third of D, which is F sharp, and it does again. Then it goes, right there, it lands on the third of C. And then it goes, it just hangs out here because that's G, which will be over a G chord, right? So when he's playing this note here, it's part of the D chord. Part of the C chord, and this chord, part of the G chord, right? So it makes sense why he's picking these notes. This lick here, that's just a G lick, right? You're in a G, you're in a major pentatonic. Then watch this. That part's brilliant because at the end there, he's bending this E to an F sharp over a D chord. And if you don't know that, F sharp is the third of D, and so that's why it sounds so good bending into that note, okay? So here's the whole solo put together. I got a backing track. Oh, it's not working this day. There we go. like that right so essentially what's happening is it's chasing the chords it's got a common thread it's really tasty it's not overplayed there's some nice space in there good phrasing right all right good then after the next chorus there is a similar solo but it's twice as long same thing happens here it starts off the same way I like that, how it just kind of holds there, it goes. And then when it goes to the D, this is one of my favorite licks in the whole solo. And I think some people play like this. That is such a beautiful lick. So what's happening there is it's a, it's a D chord that it's ending on. So what, what's gonna happen is you're gonna bend the third of D up from F sharp to G, and you're gonna start off with the pre-bend, which means you, you bend the note like this and then let it dive down. 
So it's a... Then you're on the D, so you're, you land on the F sharp from the G to the F sharp pre band like this. So basically, just falling into this D chord here. And then I'm going to bend the F sharp to G. And then I hit the, the D on the high E string, and then I bring it back down. I can do it here. So that's what I'm doing is I'm creating like a D sus chord and then a D chord. So I'm creating a, a little bit of tension and then release when I hit the third of the D, right? So, and that's the same thing that happened in the riff in the beginning where it's that tension and the release on the third. So what, that's what's happening here. So. So one more time, here's the second solo. Same as the first one. Beautiful, I love that. And then it goes into the second half of the second solo, or you could call it the third solo if you wanted to. It starts off the same way. Then you departs for it. Let's talk about that lick right there, okay? So what's happening is he's sliding up in the pentatonic scale, so I'm in pattern one. He's gonna slide up to pattern two. Then when it goes to the C chord, he lands on a C note. And then he goes, he bends up to an E note which both notes happen to be in a C chord. So, so from here. That's just kind of walking back down the scale. Like, we're doing a bend instead. Then it goes to the G chord. Over the G chord, it's going to do this, which is basically, you're basically just chasing this G chord right here, right? You want to start on a B, like right here on the 12th fret, do like a bend release, then this goes straight up. And that little lick right there is just a pentatonic lick over G. I'm going to do like a a pre-bend right here on the 14th fret of the G string, so. Down on the 12th fret of the G, bend the 14th fret to the 15th fret of the B string, then bend it back down. So that's just all G stuff. Slash always does a good job of landing on a note that's in the chord. Then I'm going to go to a D chord next, and right here, he's going to come to the 17th fret of the B string, like this, and bend to the third, so this is going from E to F sharp. So he's bending to the third of the note again, a third of the chord, rather. And uh, if you don't know, the best note you can land on for a chord is the third. The third is going to be the most sweet sound to your ear. It's always going to be like uh, the, the easiest tone to grab from a chord to like identify it um, and the audience is going to love it if you hit a third so that's what he does here he bends to the third then he adds the fifth of d right here which is a so you get that nice like chordal sound so here's the whole third solo Except for that last set, it's supposed to be it, so. Good, so that's like the, the main riff and the first couple solos there. Um, the thing you want to take away from this, why is this riff so awesome? All right, number one, there is a common thread. There are phrases that, are, that he is playing around the whole time. Number two, 
it chases the chords. So like you can see that this riff is chasing the D, C, and G chords. So every time he is on one of those chords, he's conscious to play a note in that chord to make it match with the chord so it sounds good. It's also not overplayed. It's very simple. You don't have to play a million notes to like make a riff awesome. As a matter of fact, um, the mo most people that will appreciate the riff, the riffs with a million notes are people like me who are guitar teachers or guitar players. But the general public wants to hear like a sweet melody that's easy to follow, that's simple, that's not overplayed, that has some space in it, right? Um, and uh, yeah, and one of the other great things he does is he does a lot of bending. So instead of just going like uh, like this, he does a lot of bending in there. Just so you can get like more of that like bluesy sound and kind of bending between the notes. Like when he goes, when he does that, when he does that earlier from the E to the F sharp here, he could easily go here, but he bends to it. Cool. All right. So hopefully that's uh, helpful for you guys. And hopefully that will give you like an idea of like why Sweet Child of Mine is such an awesome riff and why the solos in the beginning are so awesome and so tasteful. I wish I had time to get into the... Uh, uh... But I don't. Lo, I don't. Maybe next time. So if you guys like this video and you want more videos like it where we kind of look at a riff together and see why it's awesome, uh, just comment. Let me know what songs you want me to like diagram for you and figure out. So again, Don Russo, Freeway Music. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys next time.